Welcome to Team Amina Teaching. This is your first grade eight geography lesson for term two. In today's lesson, we will be looking at various weather elements. I am Emma van Feren, and this is my Team Amina Teaching. Today, we will start on a journey through climatology. Before we start, it is important to note the main difference between weather and climate. Weather refers to the day-to-day -day occurrences of the condition of the atmosphere. So this is measured on a daily basis, like what we're used to seeing on the news. Whereas climate is measured over a longer period of time so as to get an average. Because of climate, we are able to predict what the weather will be at a certain place at a certain time of year. For example, we know that Cape Town experiences its rainy season during winter, whereas Durban is very, very hot in summer. If you watch the weather on the news, you will notice that the forecasting is reduced to a few pictures and numbers. There are many factors that need to be considered when interpreting the weather. The weather elements that we will be discussing today will be temperature, precipitation, humidity, wind, both speed and direction, clouds and sunshine. Temperature is how hot or cold the actual air temperature is. We measure temperature using a thermometer and it is measured in degrees Celsius. When using a thermometer, the mercury inside heats up to the temperature of the person or the thing and is read off the numbers on the side. Precipitation refers to rain, hail, snow, sleet, or any kind of water that falls to and condenses on the ground. This is measured using a rain gauge and the unit of measurement is millimeters. Humidity is the quantity representing the amount of water vapor present in the atmosphere. When the air is fully saturated, the water will fall to the ground as hail, snow, or sleet. The actual air temperature is measured using a dry bulb thermometer or a thermometer as used when measuring temperature, whereas humidity or dew point temperature is measured using a wet bulb thermometer. This shows how much water is present in the air. Another instrument used to measure this is called a hygrometer. Dew point temperature is represented as a percentage showing how much of the air is saturated. Wind direction is measured by the direction from where the wind comes. This is observed by a compass and is measured using the cardinal points north, east, south and west. Wind speed is measured using a wind vane and this is recorded as knots. A knot is one nautical mile per hour. One knot is equivalent to 1.8 kilometers. The term knot dates back to the 17th century when sailors wanted to measure the speed of their ships using a device known as a common log. This device was a coil of rope with uniformly spaced knots attached to a piece of wood that is shaped like a slice of pie. The piece of wood was lowered from the back of the ship and was allowed to float behind it. The line was allowed to pay out freely from the coil as the piece of wood fell behind the boat for a specific amount of time. When the specified time had passed, the line was pulled in and the number of knots between the ship and the wood were counted. The speed of the ship was said to be the number of knots counted. You may be familiar with wind being measured as kilometers per hour, and I agree, this definitely makes it easier for us to understand. Clouds are observed using our eyes. They are measured in eighths, zero eighths being a clear sky, whereas eight eighths would indicate an overcast sky. There are also a couple of cloud types. Clouds are classified according to their density. Cirrus clouds are wispy and light clouds, usually the kind of clouds that you'd see on a lovely summer's day. Cumulus clouds are the traditional puffy white clouds that we're used to drawing when we're kids. Stratus clouds are the layered blanket type of clouds and cumulonimbus clouds are the very big clouds that you would find when a storm is approaching. These cumulonimbus clouds often bring with them lightning and thunder. Sunshine is recorded with a simple yet clever device called the Campbell-Stokes recorder. In this device, a glass sphere 
concentrates sunlight onto a card. The amount of scorching on the card records the amount of sunlight that has fallen on it. The amount of sunlight is recorded as a number out of 24. In our next video, we will be discussing all things pressure, so make sure that you tune in.